Hello everyone and welcome back to AMOS, our course on Agile methods and open source software. In the second section of the second part, I will now talk about the tools that we will use for this process and the artifacts, that is the output, the output that we will generate uh, from using these tools. Our goal here is or was to make it as simple as possible, but not simpler. And the reason for this is that during software development, you already have to learn a lot of open source frameworks. So keeping the tools for the process simple uh, was a, is a good idea. Mostly we will use GitHub for the code, for the code repository, but also for detailed fine grain issue and uh, process management. So we'll use GitHub issues and what's called GitHub project, a Kanban board. But for high-level uh, tracking, we will use Google Sheets, uh, which will serve as a form to make our life easy. You can add to this if you want to, but you do it at your own risk. The tools we give you are required. They're mandatory, and we use them to track how you're doing. So I will now discuss these tools, and for this I will use an example, the probably well-known Wildside Flowers application. Wildside is the framework, Flowers is the instantiation or specific use of Wildside for flower photos. So the idea here is that the Flowers web application lets flower photo enthusiasts or flower enthusiasts share photos of flowers, rate them, talk to each other about them and so forth. So here you see a flower photo and you can praise it with a value of 1 to 10 and after you've clicked that you'll get another one. So cool. uh, the goal is to develop uh, open source software and we store the code in a GitHub code repository. You should therefore have a GitHub account if you don't have one yet. You should create one and then send your handle name to your team coach so that they can give you access to an already existing project on GitHub, which will be your uh, central project. It will be under Amos Pro, an organization set up for these projects, and um, you can, you will all get ownership to your code repository. You can change that as you see fit. Uh, we will simply allow everyone in in a given project and make you all owners. There's a pattern to the name, please don't change it. It will be open and world readable because it's open source software and it uses the MIT license. You can establish your way of working as you see fit, whether it's centralized collaboration or distributed Git style collaboration, that's up to you, but obviously you will have to find agreement on that as a team. So then, in order to develop software, you need to know what you want to develop, which is you need to have a list of features to implement. So a feature is a distinguishing characteristic of a software or performer, a sort of functional item like being able to show photos, but also performance uh, features or stability and so forth, meaning non-functional uh, requirements. There are many different ways of how you can describe or specify a feature, and we use the user story. That's a very lightweight form of capturing requirements or describing features. And a user story follows a sentence pattern, which is, as a user, I need a function so that I get some business value. So, for example, um, the tell a friend feature of Wildside Flowers goes like this. As a user of the website, I need a function to tell a friend about a flower photo or shorter. I want to tell a friend about a flower photo so that I can share my passion for flowers three parts. Who am I? What do I need? Why is that valuable? The other, uh, so a feature is a so-called issue. Issue is the general term and there are multiple types of issues. 
The feature again is the, perhaps the most important one because that's a new functionality. That's why we are developing the software. In addition to features, you may have refactorings or bugs uh, as other types of issues. And I'm using the word issue because that is what GitHub offers us. On GitHub, you can create issues. And again, uh, one of three types, but the most prominent one will be the feature. Uh, here, cast as a feature request, meaning you want to implement it yet. We have given you, by way of the GitHub project that we prepared for you, uh, we have given you a template for feature requests, which contains, uh, has a title obviously, but then contains that user story I mentioned earlier as a way of describing a feature. Then acceptance criteria, which are feature-specific tests in which it is captured what needs to be done, have been done, for the feature to have been properly implemented. And then there's something called the definition of done, which will only become relevant in this course from week five on, on, which is another set of criteria that need to be fulfilled before the feature is considered done. But the definition of done is independent of the actual feature content. So unlike acceptance criteria, it will be about general quality criteria, like has the code been tested and so forth. In addition to this description, you will track the size or complexity of implementing this feature uh, using labels. There is an estimated size. That's what you think it is in terms of size, the feature. And then there is a real size, which is the final size that you write down once you did the work so you feel more certain about how complex it was. So here's an example, the telefriend feature uh, request again. And as a user, I can email a friend about a photo so that I can share my passion user story. Acceptance criteria, after hitting OK, an email is sent. All right, that's obvious. After hitting cancel, no email is sent. Also perhaps obvious, but needs to be said. And then the next page is the main page. So apparently in the workflow, you always go to the main page after, after you performed the telefriend function. Definition of done has not been defined here yet. There is none yet. As you can see, a user story and its acceptance criteria, meaning the feature request is rather short and sweet. It is obviously not a full specification. Hence, you will need to talk about it. Scrum is based on the idea that uh, the knowledge of the system is in the heads of the people and not in documentation. Here is how the telefriend feature might look like. It um, leads to this form where you enter some data, meaning the email content and then telefriend. So one feature does not make a software. Many, many features make a software, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of features. So we need a process and a tool to organize this stream of features that is to be implemented. And that tool is the Kanban board. The Kanban board is used to structure that stream of features. So let's first look at the life cycle of a single feature before we uh, look at many features. The life cycle of a single feature goes through multiple stages. Stage one is it barely exists as a blimp in the, blip in the mind of the product owner in Scrum, the person who writes the requirements. But then it gets written down and uh, becomes part of the so-called product backlog. Now for the first time it's been written down, typed in as a user story and so forth. Being in the product backlog means that the feature is coming up for planning and implementation eventually, but not yet. It will bubble to the top of the product backlog over time because uh, where it, uh, because all the other features, features have been implemented already. What's at the top is the most highly prioritized feature request. So then when it's 
time comes, the feature is put into the sprint backlog. Actually, it's put into the sprint backlog as a batch of feature requests that are supposed to be implemented in the upcoming sprint. So all the features in the product backlog can be a lot. Uh, it's unlimited. Uh, when it comes into, when it's put into the sprint backlog, it's a finite number of features. Those that the team thinks can be done within a sprint here a week. So then this feature, when the sprint starts after planning, is a waiting implementation, meaning it's waiting to be implemented. And if a developer chooses to work on that feature, they will move it to the in-progress column or it moves into the fourth stage where it's being worked upon and gets implemented. If it was implemented uh, to the satisfaction of the developer, the developer moves it into the awaiting review column. So from the developer's perspective, the feature entered a new stage, it's done. But not necessarily from the product owner's perspective, uh, that other person. There still needs to be a review of the feature, which confirms it has been properly implemented. If the feature passes review, it moves on to stage six. It goes into the feature archive, which is just a collection of all the features that have been properly implemented. At any stage, three, four, or five, during a sprint, a feature may, uh, um, so, so not at, at any point of time during the sprint, but at the end of the sprint, the feature may not pass review. Either it doesn't pass review or it's still in progress or it wasn't even started to work upon. Then it's moved back into the product backlog for new scheduling again in the upcoming sprint planning meeting, which we will, we will be talking about in a bit. So here are seven, six, seven stages for our feature requests as they go from being just an idea to having been implemented and documented. And you already saw or wondered what those specific names like product backlog mean. Well, these are scrum terminologies, scrum terms. And so a product backlog is that set of features which um, is awaiting implementation. Um, but really it's a collection, an incomplete evolving list of features. They should be prioritized. Usually you do that by arranging the order in some written down form. So they should be uh, prioritized. And why they are in the product backlog is because they create business value. So when I say feature, a feature that is in the product backlog is called a product backlog entry as well. So that is our feature request. Um, it could also be other types of issues like bugs or refactorings. That's why product backlog entry here using GitHub issues and project. We'll see that in a second. Uh, using this particular tool, it's equivalent to an issue. The second column was the sprint backlog. Again, these are the features that are up for implementation in the coming sprint. And uh, hence, it's a finite list. So the column or the set of features is called the sprint backlog. And the particular entry or whatever type of issue it may be is called a sprint backlog. And the final column is the feature archive where we collect all features that have been finished. The columns in progress and awaiting review have no special name in Scrum. So I pointed to it already. We use not only GitHub issues to capture feature requests, we use a GitHub project to have a Kanban board, uh, which will be basically a mirror of the stages that I showed earlier. Here you can see a screenshot of a Kanban board again from Wild Set Flowers and you should recognize these five columns. That's the common visual way of presenting these different stacks or sets of features. Product backlog, sprint backlog, in progress awaiting review and feature archive. And it's pretty nice on, Git, on GitHub. You can move these cards, the issues around back and forth depending on how the process, your progress works out. Please note how we estimated the size in the beginning. And once 
a feature or an issue enters um, the awaiting review stage, so it's been implemented, we added the real size. And we need to track not only the estimated size, we also need to track the real size of the feature, the complexity of implementing it uh, for longer term planning, as we will explain it later in this course. So then, beyond the tools that GitHub gives us, uh, we need to do some more planning and collecting of information. So that it's not spread all over, all over the place, we use a single Google Sheet where you will enter and track all relevant data that can't make it easy, that can't be provided through GitHub easily. For this, please uh, copy the planning document template here to make it your planning documents. If you wonder about an example, the flowers, the wildside flowers example is available, also linked to from here. And I will use the wildside flowers example now to explain to you um, how, how these strategic planning documents are used. We actually have a fair number of tabs, uh, each addressing a different concern. The first one is basic project data. We need to know uh, your GitHub repository. Obviously, you can find it, but please enter the link here and a link to the Kanban board. And um, uh, if there's a production system, please link to it as well. Second tab is the project team. Please let us know who is on your team. We also know, but we want to see the list of names here. In particular, we need to know their GitHub usernames and hence also an email address. You can add additional information like a Skype or other type of ID for communication purposes as well. Feel free to add to this tab. Third tab is the so-called team contract. This is a discussion, the team, the output of a discussion the team needs to have, which is about how do we want to work together. So it's about the goals, norms, rewards, and sanctions um, that you impose on each other. Why are you doing this? Just to have fun or to get a good grade? That's up to you. Um, you want to sit down and discuss what happens if someone's always late for a meeting, all of these things. Uh, we provide to you a link here uh, at the bottom of the page where you get examples and a more detailed explanation of what we await of you as part of a team contract. Please take this discussion serious. Uh, it is a little bit like your operating manual or the rules of operations as a team. On tab four, you put down who gets to play what role when. The different ways of how we do Amos, Amos, the Amos project, um, if there's a statically assigned product owner, it's always the same people in the product owner column, same thing for Scrum Master, everyone else then is a software developer. In general, we recommend that uh, you don't alternate uh, roles too much. Um, and uh, sometimes it's even tied to the ECTS you can get. On tab five, you have to please specify or describe your understanding of the what Scrum calls now in Scrum 2020, um, the product goal, meaning why are you doing this? For a university project, we have split it into two parts a vision and a mission. The vision is the glorious far out purpose of existence of this project like sharing passion about flower photos and the project mission. So the vision is not limited in time. Compare that with the mission of a project where a project naturally has an end date uh, here three months in three months. Um, so the mission is about what you can achieve in these three months. So spend time on thinking about why are we doing it? That's the vision. And then on the mission, 
what of this overall vision can be actually reasonably achieved within the time frame of this project. Tab six is the terms of the domain, a glossary or domain glossary. So here, please put down the names or the key terms, domain concepts that you hear from your customers and give them a precise definition. This is a simple way of having a domain model. Um, you are learning about some domain you may not be familiar with, even if it's a technical domain. But if it's, say, a financial domain, you would have to put down an explanation of what's an interest rate and what are different ways of calculating interest, for example. On tab seven, you um, track the progress of the mid towards the mid project release. So initially, you just have your Kanban board and the uh, product and sprint backlog. Here on tab seven, you also list which feature requests you're doing in a given sprint, and you're collecting or totaling the amount of work in the form of sizes, so the complexity of work you are going to get done within a week. So you're really tracking across the weeks. You don't have to provide the full feature here. Just put down um, the name of the feature and what initially you estimated it would be in terms of size. And later what you learned it would be in terms of uh, what, what the real size was. So you'll get the information to track to track the size and we will use that to calculate the development speed as well as to chart progress towards the final release. The final release is the next tab. So I've split mid project and final release into two tabs and uh, the final release um, planning begins roughly near the end of the mid project release. So while tab seven was only tracking, so you entered it after the fact, tab eight on the final project release will also contain the planning, meaning you sit down and plan out the whole remaining six, seven weeks, uh, including estimations, so that we can see how you're doing uh, in terms of achieving that goal as you start tracking the actual progress towards that goal. On tab nine, the Scrum Master manages process issues, problems, so-called impediments. Uh, the impediments are always social, people, process issues, never technical problems. So the Scrum Master who takes care of the impediments backlog and the issues put down there, the impediments put down there, uh, does not take care of technical problems. That's the discussion among developers and product owners. On tab 10, um, starting week five of the course, you will write down your definition of done. The definition of done are again the feature independent criteria of what makes a good feature, meaning it's not about the actual content of the feature, but it's general quality criteria like the feature has been properly documented, the code has been properly documented and properly tested and so forth. So the definition of done on a feature level is the same for every feature. On a sprint level is the same for every sprint and on a product release level is the same for every product. Release. On tab 11, you provide a links to uh, your documentation. We expect at least a user manual and a developer documentation. On tab 12, you track the open source libraries or any third party libraries really that you're using. Uh, taken together, they constitute the so called bill of materials. We need the context, uh, the specific library name, the uh, version and the license. And the last tab is a simple tool for playing planning poker. 
This is a size estimation technique. We will discuss them as discuss planning poker as part of the, our discussion of the team meeting, which is uh, what's coming up next. So then uh, we expect of you as laid out in the course schedule uh, various deliverables. Usually that is GitHub, the GitHub project in a clean state on class day, as well as the strategic planning documents in a clean state also on class day. That's it for me. Thank you very much for your time and attention and I will see you in the next section.